or a grave that I'm not going to allow my father's sorrow to take your life. Grace and Peace, First Watch Town, family and friends. Good morning and welcome to First Church Virtual Service. My name is Patrice Hall and thank you for joining us today. Before we hear the word from our very own Dr. Dennis W. Bishop, I have a few announcements to share. Submissions to recognize your graduate during Graduate Sunday are due next Sunday, May 30th. Please visit the announcements and events section on the church website to submit the requested information. 
Attention all youth ages five and above, it's time to register for FWBC Bible Boot Camp. You don't wanna miss this hybrid experience of faith, fun, and fellowship. The deadline to register is June 7th. Registration packets can be received by sending an email to youth at firstwatown.org. Vacation Bible School is coming soon. Be in the lookout for additional information in upcoming weeks. Join us virtually for Family and Friends Day next Sunday, May 30th. We will be premiering our service via Facebook Live, our website, and YouTube. You will have three ways to participate in our virtual services. There's a lot going on at FWBC. To stay connected with First Church, join our mailing list. Go to our website and fill out the form today so you won't miss out. We thank you for your continued support of FWBC. It is important during these unprecedented times that we continue to contribute to our church home so that when it's safe to return, we may do so. We invite you to give. Visit our website at www.firstwalltown.org and click the giving link. We are so happy to have you here at Virtual First Church. Here at First Walltown, everybody is somebody and nobody is all but Christ. Be blessed. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching. Glory, hallelujah, glory. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. Come on, let's stand together and pray this morning. Eternal and gracious Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us even while we were in our trespasses and sins. Loved us enough to forgive us. Loved us enough to save us, to set us free. Loved us enough to fill us with your spirit and then to empower us for your service. And Father, we certainly will never forget that we didn't get here on our own. It is by your amazing grace. And thank you for our coming together today and knowing that your truth is still marching on. Now forgive us continuously of our sins and our shortcomings. Forgive us for every thought, every idle word, every wrong deed, whether it's in action or in thought. Cleanse us as only you can. Father, restore unto us the joy of our salvation. Save somebody today. Heal somebody as only you can. And now would you let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, you are our strength and you certainly are our redeemer. And so here we are. 
with our elbows pressed against the window sills of heaven and we would see Jesus. Bless us now in our time together. Speak to all of our hearts in Jesus' name. If you're in agreement with that prayer, go ahead and give a thunderous amen. Write it in the comment section and let somebody know you are agreeing with us in that prayer today. Come on, let's worship together. You know these songs. Stand with us. Let's worship and bless the name of our God today the hypnologist says when we've been there when we've been there ten thousand years bright shining as the sun we days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Come on, let's praise God together. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise God, 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 one more time, praise Him. Praise God, 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 praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God, amen and hallelujah, glory to the name of our Father. He is still Lord to the glory of God the Father and someday every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he's Lord to the glory of God the Father. Well, thank you for joining us today again for this virtual worship. And I want to say to you again, without giving any specific time or date, it is nowhere near as long as it has been that we are looking forward to returning to in-person worship. Until then, just stay with us, stay with God, stay with the word, keep giving, keep blessing the name of our God wherever you are, and keep fellowshipping with us, even virtually. I want to thank all of those persons today who have served in some capacity of ministry. Thank God for every one of you. Those of you that are joining us by Facebook, want to say to our FWBC family, thank you for joining us. And as you have been joining us for over a year now, thank you so very much. To all of our Facebook family and friends, to our Muslim brothers, Asalaamu Alaikum to you. Thank all of you for every part you have played in lifting the name of our God. And so we're grateful again today to be able to come to you and to share with you the word of God. I want to invite you today to join us as we resume the message that we started on last Sunday as we are talking about the woes of every generation. Every generation has its warnings, its woes, its hold up, wait a minute, 
take a look at, give heed to or attention to. Whoa, let me say something to you, says the Lord. And so I want to talk about the woes of every generation. I, I want you to uh, share with us today in the reading of our base scripture, which is Matthew, St. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 7. St. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 7. Now what I want to do today, if time permits, if I can stay focused enough to do it, I want to read some passages from the King James Version, and then I want to read some passages from the Message Bible. And uh, from the King James, I'll be reading from the uh, Leaflet Bible, and from the Message Bible, I'll be trying to read from the tablet from the uh, iPad, the tablet. And so you just have to bear with me. We don't have anything but time, and I won't take a whole lot of your time, but uh, just bear with us today because I want to uh, read some from the King James, and then I want to read some uh, with a little better understanding so that we can do what that Bible says, and that is get the message. Is that all right? Matthew, St. Matthew chapter 3, verse 7, and you'll find these words with whatever you're reading with us from, you'll find these words. Now, don't forget, before we start our reading, don't forget, on next Sunday, the fifth Sunday, it is Family and Friends Day. I'm going to be looking, I'm going to be watching from somewhere and see how many people you invite to Family and Friends Day. Now, some of you all that's been inviting your families to other things, to Zooms, to Zoom meetings and all of that. I want you to evangelize and invite your family members, whether in state, out of state, in town, out of town. I, I want you to invite them to Family and Friends Day. If you if you feel the Lord has something to say to you as well as to them and he does, I want you to invite somebody, invite your friends, invite your family, young people, invite some friends. Just ask them to come out here and just listen to the message and be a part of what the Lord is saying to this generation. Invite next week. I want I'm, I want to I want to see. And listen, if you invite somebody or ask somebody to join you or hit share while we are uh, ministering the word, however you do it, have a watch party, whatever you do. Uh, listen, I, I'm going to be I'm going to be asking somebody to help me to know how to see who's out there. And I want you as you invite people, have them to just write something in the comment section and say so and so invited me. Let, ask, ask them to just put it out there. Uh, uh, who invited them and 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 we're going to be looking and and even if we've got to go back later and look at some of the comments to see who invited somebody uh, it could be very rewarding for you that's next Sunday family and friends day all right St. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 7 here's what the scripture says but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees Come to his baptism, John the Baptist baptizing Jesus, and John looks up and sees the Sadducees and Pharisees coming to his cousin Jesus' baptism. John said unto them these words, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come. O oh, generation, there's that word of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Let's talk for just a few minutes from God's word. I kind of ended on the note last week of sharing with you and telling you of the wedding that I officiated a few weeks ago in Monroe, North Carolina for one of the young girls that grew up in this church, now a grown woman, has a daughter of her own. And thank God her and her fiance thought enough to ask me to officiate their wedding. 
And I talked to you about all of the young people, just bringing you up to date, up to speed, and some of you that may not have been with us when we did that message, but inspired me. Those young people, now adults, inspired me with their conversation of remaining, holding fast to their faith in God. The upbringing of their parents and grandparents and people of ministry and people of this ministry they're sharing together, having their own times of conversation and Bible study, even, even away from the church. But, but they talked about the things that they learned and experienced that they still hold dear to their hearts, even to this day, of the truths that they received, of the growth that they have experienced, of the success that they have obtained. And listen, they give all of the credit, the glory, and the honor to God. And I'm telling you, they blessed me so much that I, I got off on this tantrum that I'm on now as being led of the Holy Spirit. I just don't go off on tantrums on my own, but having being led of the Holy Spirit. And then sometimes just running into periodically Adults now that grew up in this church and grew up in this ministry and grew up under the word and in praying homes and had praying parents and praying grandparents and praying aunts and uncles and big brothers and big sisters. Listen, I, I couldn't even begin to name or tell you the hundreds and some of them are still here today grown and working in ministry and sharing in this ministry and helping this ministry to grow and helping us to advance and enhancing many of the qualities that this ministry has had for years and now bringing it all into a time such as this with the technology, with the wisdom, with the nuggets, with the things that they have picked up over the years, with their college experiences, with their college education or their high school education or whatever they have to offer. Many of them are still here right now and they're sharing and I'm certainly thankful and grateful. I'm always thankful. Young people bless me. Even if they are adults now, they bless me. And so what I want to tell you is that they've got me on this, on this series as the Holy Spirit inspired me through their conversations and through looking at how beautiful they have grown up to be, men and women, how beautiful their spirits are. And listen, I'm saying all of this because we need to know and understand that all young people in this generation and even those who are adults now have not gone to what we sometimes refer to as to the dogs. <laughs> Thank God the dogs hadn't gotten them. They still hold fast to their profession of faith and they acknowledge God for all of their accomplishments and everything that God is doing in them. So stay with us. Here's what I kind of ended on by telling you when we were closing out the last time that from all of those conversations with all of that inspiration and that which I sometimes see and hear other than being there, my spirit man leaped for joy. And I want to tell you today my spirit man is still rejoicing because I see the good hand of God not just on us seniors not just on the seniors that were ahead of us or the generation ahead of us not just in my generation but I see it in the generation 
under us i see it in the generation that's coming up up under them and i see it going down and down and down the line from way up the line what the scripture calls even down to a thousand generations but i want to say to you every generation has its woes let's go to the scripture thank god for you joining us today let me give to you again my admonition that I somewhat closed on the last time we were together. I, I, I'm giving you just what I call admonition and, and I'm giving it to the future generational church. Not that we're going off the scene, not that we're planning as of right now to go anywhere. I'm just giving you some things that the Lord has laid upon my heart as he has directed me to start ministering to the generation that's present and the generations that's coming along. Because, see, the church is a living organism. One goes off the scene, another one should be ready to carry it on. One may pass away, go on to glory. Somebody else ought to be ready to step in, pass it on. Not that anybody has to go off the scene. Not that anybody has to pass away. But we ought to constantly be training and teaching and enlightening and enhancing and prompting the minds of every generation so that should that time comes and eventually it will come for all of us. But somebody will be ready to not let the ball drop, but to carry the torch on to the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. Because I want to tell you, as we sang a little bit earlier in coming on today, God's truth is marching on. And it's marching from generation to generation to generation. Help us, God. So I want to give you my admonition. And my admonition is to the present. And the reason I say present, because they are now. They are not the church of tomorrow. You're the church of today. And I use the word present, but I also put a slash there and use the word future generational church. Who knows? Someday I may be sitting up under your leadership, your ministry, your pastorate. And I want to be just as faithful in sitting and serving as I've tried to be in leading. And we've got to have that mindset that we've got to pass the torch down and start now in prompting this generation to thinking not me ward, but God would. And when I say me would, I mean M-E-W-A-R-D. Stop thinking just me would and start thinking capital G-O-D-W-A-R-D, God would. Start thinking up. So let's talk a little bit together today. And here's my admonition that I shared with you the last time. I'm talking fast and I'm about to say here's my ammunition. <laughs> here's my admonition that I closed on with you the last time. Be very careful, young people. Be very careful, young adults, millenniums. Be very careful, adults that are beyond the millennial age. Not to get caught up in just the way things are being done right now. That's my woe unto you. Be careful, woe, that you don't get caught up in just the way things are being done right now. In the way everybody else is doing it. In the way everybody else is saying it. 
in the excitement that everybody else may be having but have no deep roots that when the excitement is gone and the hoopla is down that I'm rooted into something that's going to keep me and hold me fast when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. Listen to this. Don't get caught up as I concluded the last time together is what John was telling these Sadducees and Pharisees who came to Jesus' baptism. He calls them a generation of vipers. And he says, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. In other words, he was saying, if your coming is not sincere and your coming is not real and your coming is not a committed way of coming to join in the fellowship of the baptism, then don't just come and get caught up with all of the other hoopla that is going on if there's no real committed stance, purpose for you to be here. Now, what are you saying, Pastor? Has nothing to do with coming to church. Has nothing to do with coming to fellowship. John points out the fact that he wanted them to understand that the baptism was not just a display or a show. It was sincere. It was a sacrifice. Jesus was sacrificing himself to be baptized of John before he was to eventually return to the Father. And he was saying to them, it's all about commitment. It's all about sincerity. It's all about purpose. It's all about being Godward. And what John was saying is that what Jesus is doing, he's doing it with meaning and he's doing it with purpose that's going to eventually benefit you if you just get on board. So what, what I'm seeing today, what, what, what I'm really seeing happening in our society today is that I'm seeing a generation that is obsessed with popularity. Listen to what I'm saying. Please hear me. Don't tune us out. Don't leave the scene. Don't. What's happening in our society is that we are obsessed with popularity. Now, let me give my disclaimer, as I so often do. I want to give a disclaimer before you jump to conclusions on what I just said to you. Or before it rubs you the wrong way. There's nothing wrong with popularity. Hear me real good. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be accepted. There's nothing wrong, here's that word, with popularity... Because popularity has its place, young people, adults, seniors, elders, all of us, popularity has its place. Don't forget that. Somebody write that for me in the comment section. Popularity has its place. But listen to this next important statement that I want to make to you. Listen to this. You can't be a prophet and be popular. I didn't say prophesy. I said you can't be a prophet and be popular. Now, you can be, listen to this, you can be a popular false prophet. 
but you cannot be a true prophet and be popular. And that's a bold statement. But I make that statement because that statement is true. I make it because it is bold. And I make it because the scriptures, the word of God, backs me up. <laughs> Glory to God. I could have made that statement and left it right there. And you can argue with me all day and you can debate with me all day if I choose or chosen or chose to get into a debate with you or choose to get into a debate with you. Either one. Listen, you could argue with me. We could debate all day long. But I don't choose to do that. You know why? I make that statement and I stand on and I base it on what neither you or I can argue with, and that is the word of God. Well, pastor, how are you going to prove that then? All right. You can be a popular false prophet. Turn with me to St. Luke chapter 6 and verse 26. St. Luke chapter 6 and verse 26. And I won't do a whole lot of reading. I'll let you do that. But I'll give you the chapter. I'll give you a verse or two. And uh, you can share with me from that verse as we expound on that verse. But you can go back in your reading time because I know that all of you, many of you, will already pull up your commentaries on Google or you'll have your books or you'll have whatever you use to go and to look and see if I'm on target, to see if I'm right. And listen, I invite you to do so. Please do your research. Don't let me do all of the work for you. Please do your research. I spend countless minutes and hours trying to prepare messages. I want you to spend countless minutes and hours, young people, young adults, adults, millennials, seniors. I want you to spend time. In God's word. And that's why I give you some of these scriptures so that I can challenge you to go back and follow us. Even in days to come throughout the week, go back, look at those scriptures, examine them, ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you and to direct you and to guide you and to lead you so that you can see whether or not we're on track. Go ahead and do as we sometimes say, check me. Luke, St. Luke chapter 6, verse 26. Listen to what he says there. He says, whoa, W-O-E, whoa, there's our first woe, or there's one of the woes. He says, woe unto you. Listen to this. Don't miss this clause. When all men speak well of you, for their fathers treated the false prophets there it is, the same way. Listen to that. Woe unto you when all men or all women or everybody speaks well of you. For their fathers treated the false prophets the same way. Now, let me say this to you. It is always good, at least I always feel good, when somebody says something good about me. And I'm sure you feel the same way. I often say this when I'm doing sermons and somebody introduced me, when I'm ministering somewhere, when I'm speaking to some group, when I'm doing some presentation, and somebody introduces or presents me and they have something good to say about me, listen, I always feel good just like you do when somebody says something good about me or about you. Doesn't, doesn't it just give you warm fuzzies when somebody says something good about you? We start cheesing and carrying on. But listen to the woe that the writer gives. He says, when all men, all ways, speaks well of you, watch out. 
be careful. And I'm using this passage to support the statement that I just made in the fact that you can't be a prophet, a proclaimer of the truth, and be popular. It's a sad day for the body of Christ when we feel that we shouldn't have to go through or experience anything other than something good, something positive, something fruitful, something joyful, something that everybody else is saying good about us. No, that's a sad day. The scripture says if they are always talking good about you and always speaking well of you, that's when you better question what you're doing and what you're teaching and what you're preaching and what you're ministering and what you're sharing and what you're singing. The voice may be good, but something in the message ought to pierce somebody to the point that they would even say something like this, like they so often do. And when I hear people say things like this, I just look up and say, God, they're talking about you. <laughs> when people say that was a good word, that was good teaching, I rejoice in that. And I say, God, they're talking about you. But then sometimes when I hear others say, well, he had a good message, but then all of a sudden he dropped off the porch talking about something else, I say, God, <laughs> They're talking about you. <laughs> he, was, he was doing good, sounding good. But then he said something that I didn't agree with. Do you not know we can all live and share and walk and minister and talk together? in agreement and agree to disagree without falling out with you? Listen to what was happening. Listen to what was being said. He says here in St. Luke 6, 26, then, woe unto you when everybody all the time speaks well of you. Hear me, young people and adults. Whoa, because this is what they did to their fathers, and this is how the fathers of that day treated, there it is, the false prophets, they did them the same way. Now, moving forward and progressing in the message, what was being said here then? What was happening? Well, he was sip the right of Luke 6 was simply saying this, those that will be pleasing to all must, don't, get, don't forget this, hear this good, must speak things grateful to all and do everything that the other person likes. And listen to this. If you don't please others in every way you possibly can, here's what happens. Sometimes it presents opposition. And when the opposition comes, that's what we're usually and normally not prepared for. Not even adults, not even seniors. You've got to be on level ground to understand opposition. You've got to have a heart. You've got to be filled with the Spirit. You've got to be undergirded through faith and through and prayer when opposition comes to stay on course. Oftentimes it is opposition from another that throws us off course, that causes people to leave the ministry, that causes people to take a seat and stop working in ministry. It is opposition sometimes that causes people to give up on God and to walk away from God. 
But you know what I've noticed? It's the opposition that comes from within the body of Christ. What do I mean by that? We'll get opposition on the job we work on, but I'll get up every morning whether I want to or not, and I'll go to work. We get opposition in the school from our professors. We get opposition from each other in our families, in our inner circles. Some of our friends opposed to us. Some of our friends don't agree with us on certain things. And listen, we still hold friendship with them. We still get up and go to work. Some of our supervisors know we should have had a raise by now and will not give it to you and have not given it to you. And some of them say we can't afford to raise you right now. And yet we'll get up every morning and go to work and we might complain on our way there, but we certainly show up on the job and we work under that same supervisor. You know why? I believe it's because we know that's where our livelihood is. If I don't go to work, I don't pay bills. If I don't go to work, I can't ride in the automobile that I'm riding in. If I don't go to work and I'm married, I might lose my marriage. If I don't go to work and make money and bring home the bread, I may lose my house. I may lose my family. I may lose my children. And so listen, whether we want to or not, we still do it. You've got people on the job that talk about you. You've got people on the job that say ugly things about you, but we get up every morning, we go to that job, even if we don't pay them much attention. But listen, when it comes to the church, and here's one of the woes, when it comes to serving in ministry, when it comes to serving in the house of God, let me tell you, young people, next generation, present generation, generations to come after you, generations that's been ahead of us. This has been an age-old problem for a long time. And yet you've got some people who are so rooted and grounded in the Godward part of them and not the meward part of them. Do you not know our ancestors dealt with the same thing in the house of God? We've dealt with the same thing. You're dealing with some of the same stuff. The next generation is going to deal with some of the same stuff. Listen, it's because it's the church. We've dealt with some of that in the world. And here's what holds me fast to ministry and to serving God and to sharing God's word and to speaking God's word and to teaching God's word and preaching God's word. It's my livelihood. Do you know who woke me up this morning? Do you know who started me on my way? Do you know who put bread on the table, clothes on my back? See, this is something that young people can relate to. Shoes on my feet, got me a new pocketbook, a new purse. I've got a new this, a new that. I'm driving a nice automobile, living in a nice home. God just opened up a nice door. I got a nice job, making a nice salary. Where do you think all of that came from? It comes from him. The God of this universe. And so that's what holds me fast even when I want to throw in the towel. You know what? Say this with me. He's my livelihood. Who do you think keep us healed and whole? Who do you think raise us up when we are sick? (laughs) Glory to God. He's our, somebody write that for me, livelihood. Let's move forward in the message. Let's move forward. Those that will be pleasing to all, I repeat, must speak things grateful to all meditate on that make that a sila moment you've got to do everything they like you've got to say everything they want to hear and if not it brings opposition and resentment sometimes but listen don't let that deter you 
Well, my time has come and gone. Next Sunday, again, it's Family and Friends Day. And I can't think of any better message than to come back where we are stopping off today and starting again next week. I, I, I can't think of any better message that I would want my family and friends to hear than the message that God is proclaiming to us right now for this generation for this day for this time and for future generations to come you don't want to miss this message so stay with us and join us again next Sunday and we'll come back and we'll start right here in St. Luke 6 22 here's what I want to tell you as we've stopped off here in St. Luke today here's what the Lord is saying to all of us I want you to understand that everybody is not going to always speak well of you and if they do, you be real careful. Everybody's not going to praise your work. Sometimes you have to go ahead and bless God yourself for your own work. Everybody's not going to praise your good and talk about your good. Some people will never realize the change in you. You've got to realize the change in you and bless God for it. But if everybody was speaking everything good about you, the writer here says, be careful, whoa, because before you know it, something else may come down the line. What do you mean by that? Sometimes they will be the same ones that will turn around after speaking well of you like they did Jesus and then holler crucify you. But just know that what you do and what you say for Christ will last. God bless you today. I want to pray with some people. Hallelujah. I want to pray with you and I'll come back next time and we'll go into verses 20 two and 23 and I'll give you the flip side of that coin of saying you can't be a prophet and be popular but you can be a false prophet and really be popular father we thank you for our time together today would you let the words of our mouths meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight lord you are our strength your strength like no other and thank you that you reach all the way to us. Strength. Strength like no other. Glory to your name, God. Touch everybody right now under the sound of my voice. Move now by your power and by your spirit. And do it in Jesus' name. Here's what I want to do again this morning. I've had so many young people so many adults, young adults, to say that message blessed me. We've received some text messages. Pastor, that message moved me, prompted me, blessed me. We've had some seniors, that message and all I say is, God, I bless your name. You know what we have need of. And I want to pray again today on this wise. I want you to just join me right now. Throw your hands up to God. You might want to stand up. Might want to come a little closer. 
might want to step up and just meet me so that we can pray together might want to come a little bit closer if we were in the building people would be all around this what we call the altar an altar has never been for the purpose of blessing unless we were blessing God but altars are for the purpose of sacrificing dying to self and becoming alive to Almighty God and so you might want to just come a little closer and let's get on this altar today to where we would sacrifice ourselves our thinking our ideas our minds our focus our service to God I want to put that on the altar today and sacrifice that and say to God may everything I say and do bring glory and honor to your name God use me is our prayer use me in thy service use me Lord help me to tell the story yes I will obey listen to that I'll go all the way if you'll use me Lord use me if that's your prayer today come on closer to this altar I'm coming even myself to re-up with God and say Lord after all of these years however you choose to use me even now in this age and time and society in this generation to reach back and help another generation so they can reach back and help another generation so that your truth can keep marching on here I am Lord use me in your service I'll obey I'll go all the way don't let my robe don't let my collar don't let my title don't let my position don't let the fact that you allow me to come to this platform week after week after week to proclaim the truth of Jesus Christ don't let it be in vain don't let me see me but see Jesus and what he's doing through this vessel use me Lord go ahead and say that with me throw your hands up use me Lord if you want me to sweep the building use me God if you want me to drive a van use me Lord if you want me to play an instrument use me God if you want me to witness to somebody use me God if you want me to help somebody to know how to handle their finances to know how to advance their families their home their ministry their life financially use me God if you want me to help somebody to walk through some of the things they're experiencing in life right now use me Lord and it will all be Godward. You'll get all of the glory and the honor. I won't take any of your glory. It'll all be Godward. And none of me would. Father, touch every person right now that's crying out to you. And asking you to use them. In your service. Father, bless whatever they set their hands to in Jesus' name. Anoint us afresh for this journey. For the journey is too great for us. So you feed us from your word. Because your word is already anointed. Your word is already blessed. And help us through this journey. Now, if you're not a Christian, if you're not saved, if you've never confessed that you are a sinner and asked Jesus Christ to be your Savior and to live in your life, let's do that now. If you want to be saved, just pray this prayer with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive me for all of my sins and my shortcomings. Father, there are many 
but forgive me for them. Wash me in the blood of the Lamb. Cleanse me through your word. Wash me through your word. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life and use me after saving me to be a witness to others in Jesus name. Romans 10 13 says for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There you have it. If you are a backslider pray this prayer with me. Father you said in your word in 1 John 1 9 if I confess my sins you are faithful and just to forgive me and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Father, forgive me for my backslidden ways. Restore unto me today the joy of my salvation and fill me with your spirit today so that I can tell of your goodness and be a witness for you to other men, women, boys and girls in Jesus name. If you are a child or if you have children and they desire to be saved, give their life to Christ. Don't ever feel they're too young to be saved. After we're done, if they didn't pray that prayer with us because they may not have understood everything we were saying, would you just get with that child, get down beside them, bring them to your side, grandparents, aunts, uncles, big brothers, big sisters. If you have a person within your reach that wants to be saved, and especially a child, would you pray that prayer or some prayer with them? And lead them to Jesus Christ. Got a lot of babies want to be saved. Got a lot of them that's already saved. Would you pray with them and lead them to Christ. And help them to grow in the grace. And the knowledge of God. God bless you today. Father bless every home right now. Heal as only you can. Deliver as only you can. Make ways. Meet needs. Open doors. Provide for somebody today. I pray, God, that you will help somebody who is standing at a crossroad in their life right now. I'm speaking to you. And you're trying to make some decisions and you just don't have clarity or clear thinking on what you need to do. Ask the Lord right now to reveal to you what you are to do. And wait patiently upon him and upon his instructions and upon his directions. I'm speaking to you right now. Pastor, I'm standing here at a crossroad in my life. I don't know what to do about certain things. I'm speaking to some young adult today. Pastor, I'm hearing your word. I want to do this. I want to do that. But I'm not sure about it. Listen, wait patiently on the Lord and ask for his instructions and his direction and his revelation. And he'll reveal it to you. If not through his word. He'll reveal it to you some kind of way. I'm in agreement with you on that. In Jesus' name. Bless our schools. Bless our officials. Bless our president, our vice president. Bless all of our governing officials. Locally, state, and nationally. God, move by your power and by your spirit. In Jesus' name. God bless you today. I sense the move of God. Prayers are being answered, even right now. While you're still going on, prayers are being answered. And I bless God for you today. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord, Jehovah, lift up his countenance upon you. And give you his shalom. May he bless you in your basket, your field, your store, your bond. May he bless you to plenty and to overflowing, down sitting, up rising, going out, coming in. May your vats and your bonds overflow with abundance. May God give somebody a bumper crop. In Jesus' name. Have you forgotten that? The bumper crop. Somebody bless God for your bumper crop. In Jesus' name. God be with you and your family. And you return it to me and my family. In Jesus' name. Amen. Until the next time. We love you. And God bless you. If you were blessed by today's message and have decided to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, 
or you want to be reconciled in your relationship with the Lord, please feel free to contact us by either sending a message through Facebook or going to our website, firstwalltown.org. You will find contact information on the link in the upper right-hand corner. Be blessed.